Father, we want to thank you this evening that we can stand in thy promises. Allow us to have liberty this evening to be obedient to thy word. We do ask your word we go out with free course. We would encourage us, convict us, and direct us. In Jesus' name, amen. You may be seated. Thank you, Ms. Booker. Please take your Bibles and uh, turn to Philippians chapter 1. Philippians chapter 1. Verses uh, 19, the end of the chapter. Philippians 1, 19. For I know that this shall turn to my salvation through your prayer and the supply of the Spirit of Jesus Christ. According to my earnest expectation and my hope that in nothing I shall be ashamed, but that with all boldness, as always, so now also Christ shall be magnified in my body, whether it be by life or by death. For to me to live is Christ and to die is gain. But if I live in the flesh, this is the fruit of my labor, yet what I choose I want not. For I am in a strait betwixt two, having the desire to depart and to be with Christ, which is far better. Nevertheless, to abide in the flesh is more needful for you. And having this confidence, I know that I shall abide and continue with you all for the furtherance and joy of faith, that your rejoicing may be more abundant in Jesus Christ for me by my coming to you again. Only let your conversation be as it becometh the gospel of Christ, that whether I come and see you or else be absent, I may hear of your affairs that ye stand fast in one spirit with one mind striving together for the faith of the gospel and in nothing terrified by your adversaries which is to them an evident token of perdition but to you of salvation and that of God for unto you is given in the behalf of Christ not only to believe on him but also to suffer for his sake having the same conflict which ye saw in me and now here to be in me. As believers, we're encouraged to stand fast, to stand fast for what is true and what is faithful to the Word of God. There are people today that fail to stand fast, people that are in opposition to the Word of God, people that are opposing the Gospel of Christ. And God wants us to stand fast, as we're encouraged here from this letter to the church at Philippi, the letter that, that Paul wrote to the Philippian church many, many years ago. And so in order to stand fast, we must have one spirit and one mind. And that is all based upon the Word of God, the Scripture. The Word of God is, is the basis for how we can stand fast. If you remember how Paul first got introduced to the church at Philippi, was during the Macedonian vision in Acts chapter 16, verse, no, verse 9. Acts 16, 9. When we had the vision, verse 9. And the vision appeared to Paul in the night. There stood a man of Macedonia and prayed him, saying, Come over into Macedonia and help us. The saints in Philippi, these, these people, these Jewish individuals who had no clear understanding of the gospel, were asking for help. They knew, had some interest, had some understanding of the Messiah, but they wanted to know more about it. The Messiah, Jesus Christ, they come. And Paul, through the vision, a Mas the Macedonian vision came to Macedonia 
First person he saw was the Zalidia. Then he met the Philippian jailer. And then shortly after that, we have a church being established in Philippi. And Paul was encouraging, exhorting, giving that church an imperative to stand fast. To stand fast. In other words, to be, be planted on sound doctrine. When we do things in our Christian life, we must be based what we do upon the sound doctrine of the Word of God. We cannot base it upon feeling or on the mood of the day. Our feelings, the mood of the day, they could be wrong. The Scripture will never fail. The Scripture is always right. And God wants us to, to stand fast. It's okay to ask for help. You know, when the circumstances of our life are encompassing us to the point of, of defeating us, we still must stand fast. We must stand upon what is true and what is holy. In verse 27, first word in verse 27 is only, only. That singles it out. Only let your conversation be as become the gospel. Now this word conversation is the, the Greek word behind the English word conversation is an interesting word because it only occurs two places in the scripture. Now it's, it's different than the conversation in Hebrews, Hebrews 13 verse 5 Hebrews 13, 5 says, Let your conversation be without covetousness, and be content with such things as ye have. For he hath said, I will never leave thee, nor forsake thee. Now, that conversation, has, as, as, we know, as, as you all know, has to do with the way we live, the manner of our life. Now, the conversation in this verse, and also in another verse I'll, I'll get to in a minute, is, has to do with citizenship citizenship, which perhaps man of life, the other conversation is similar, but the idea of, uh, if we think of citizenship, has the word polis in it, the metropolitan polis. I mean, it, 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 the word is bigger than that, but that's that's part of, of the word for citizenship. Pardon, pardon, part of the word for conversation. And so, it says, only let your conversation. Now, those of us who are born again and saved, have trusted in the Lord Jesus Christ as Savior, our, citiz our citizenship is in heaven. We're seated in the heaven, heavenlies. That's how, that's how we're viewed. That's our, 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 our standing with God. Our state, our condition, the way we are right now may be a little bit different. But only let your conversation, that is our the citizenship, be as becometh the gospel. Now the other place we have this same word used before I get to to further into the verses in Acts, Acts 23 verse 1, Acts 23 verse 1, and that verse states, and Paul earnestly beholding the council said, men and brethren, I have lived in all good conscience before God until this day, as he's beginning to address the council, but the word, the same word, I have lived in Acts 23 1, is the same word as conversation in Philippians 1.27 Philippians 1.27 and so the idea of only begins with only but that singles it out it singles it out I mean we are most of us today and most people we know are citizens of the country we live in the United States there may be some that are citizens of neighboring countries. There may be others that are citizens of other countries. But the, the, the country of our birth is the country of which we are citizens of. It doesn't matter what country it is, but we are citizens of a particular country on this earth. As Christians, born-again Christians, those who have trusted in the work of Christ on the cross of Calvary, by grace alone, by faith alone, through Christ alone, on the cross of Calvary, those individuals are citizens of heaven. And we have only, 
only, we see the that, only let your conversation be as becometh becometh the gospel. Now, when we think of becoming the gospel, is the way we live a proper representation of the gospel of our citizenship? When we think of of, of from, from the standpoint of the illustration of an American citizen, when an American ambassador goes out representing the country, his conversation, his citizenship has to be becoming of that of the country which he represents. An example of the United States or whatever country you want to give. Our citizenship must be a proper representation of the gospel. We don't want to have a false gospel, false understanding of what the gospel is. The gospel must be clear. In Romans 1.16, For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God and the salvation to the Jew first and also to the Greek. If we are to be a proper citizen, a proper represent, representative of the gospel of Christ, we have to understand the gospel. Clearly, we should not be ashamed of the gospel of Christ. The idea that that good news, the good news of the Lord Jesus Christ, what he's done. Now, sadly, there are people in this world, in Colossians 4, 4, we are reminded, there are people in this world who have been blinded to the gospel. People who are dead in their trespasses and sin and do not have a full or a proper understanding of the gospel. Colossians, pardon me, 2 Corinthians 4, 4. In whom the God of this world hath blinded the minds of them which believe not, lest the light of the glorious gospel of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine unto them. 2 Corinthians 4.4 4. The God of this world has blinded their eyes. It talks about the light of the glorious gospel. Our gospel, our, our conversation, our, our manner of life, the way we, the way we live. In verse 27, at the, our conversation must be as becometh the gospel. The gospel. We don't want to be removed from to a false gospel like they were in, in Galatia, the church of Galatia. They were removed. They were mingling law and grace. We ought not to mingle law and grace. It needs to be pure grace. Pure grace. And nothing else. In Revelation 14, verse 6, And I saw another angel fly in the midst of heaven, having the everlasting gospel to preach unto them, that dwell on the earth, and to every nation and kindred and tongue and people. The everlasting gospel. The gospel does not change. It's an absolute. And we are told, we are exhorted in Philippians chapter 1, verse 27, that our conversation be as becometh the gospel of Christ. The way we live, the way we represent our citizenship, it must represent the gospel. We don't want to be, have a false testimony, a poor testimony, of what has transformed, how, what has transformed us. We must have a clear and accurate testimony of what has happened to us. And so as, as becometh the gospel, that's what we are commanded to do. Now we have to ask ourselves, is our life becoming of the gospel? The process of sanctification, becoming more and more like Jesus Christ, is something that we should never, never stop trying to do. And so, we must be living in a proper way that our lives will be, con be, will be continually being conformed to the image of the Lord Jesus Christ. The Gospel of Christ. Who is Jesus Christ? He is the Anointed One. He's, he's wonderful, Counselor, the mighty God, the everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. This is who Jesus Christ is. He is the Anointed One. We know Isaiah 9 talks about the, the Messiah being born. The Messiah being born. For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulders, and his name shall be called Wonderful, Counselor, the mighty God, the everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. 
the book of Matthew reminds us of the birth of the Messiah, how God became flesh, how he became, took upon human flesh, and he came. He lived 33 years on this earth, and he died upon a cross of Calvary, and he bled for your sin, for my sin. He took upon him the sin of the world. And anyone that puts their trust in the Lord Jesus Christ can be saved. And this is the gospel. And so our lives, our conversation must be as it becometh the gospel of Jesus Christ. No other false gospel, but the gospel of Jesus Christ. I come to see you, or else be absent. I'm a hero of your affairs. So Paul is saying, whether I'm there at one particular time, or if I hear in one particular time, I want to hear that things are going correctly, things are going properly, and that ye stand fast in one spirit with one mind. To stand fast. How important is it for us to stand, to stand fast and to stand firm? The idea of Standing fast, being, being persistent, to stand firm in a particular place. In Galatians chapter 5, verse 1, the Bible says, Stand fast, therefore, in the liberty wherewith Christ hath made us free, and be not entangled again with the yoke of bondage. Galatians chapter 5. In the liberty, Christ has made us free. We're no longer bound to the law, but we're free. And so we are, we are, we're commanded in Philippians to stand fast. In Philippians, later on in the book of Philippians, chapter 4, verse 1, Therefore, my, my brethren, dearly beloved, and long for my joy and my crown, so stand fast in the Lord, my dearly beloved. It's the only thing we need to stand fast, the only individual we need to stand fast in is the Lord. Not in something else, not in some other ideology, not in some other person, the political figure, Name your individual. Name your idea. Know where to stand fast in that which relates to the gospel, that which relates to Christ, his death, his burial, his resurrection. We cannot deviate from that. And you know there are people, there are churches, there are organizations that have deviated from that presently and in the past, and they are shipwrecked. They are representing a false gospel. They are doing something that's contrary to the word of God. And when we stop standing fast, when we stop believing and affirming what the Word of God tells us to do, then we will begin to slip into apostasy, just as like just like everyone else today and in the past has slipped and has fallen. In First Thessalonians, verse chapter three, verse eight, the Bible says, "For now we live if we stand fast in the Lord." And in 2 Thessalonians, verse, chapter 2, verse 15, Therefore, brethren, stand fast and hold the tradition which ye have been taught, whether by word or by epistle. So we must be ours, we must be planted, we must be firm in what we are taught, what we believe, based upon the Word of God, based upon the Bible, the Bible and the Bible alone, not some extra biblical information. It has to be biblical. Our conversation must be as becometh the gospel of Christ. And Paul was telling the church of Philippi, he wants it to, to be that way, whether he's there in body, or he, he just hears it, hears about it, whether he comes and sees it, or else be absent. I'm a hearer of your affairs. He stands fast in one spirit, with one mind, striving together for the faith of the gospel. One mind, one spirit. We have to have the mind of Christ. That's the mind we have to have. We have to have the idea, the spirit, the direction that Christ wants us to have. It can't be something else. It's got to be the biblical, the biblical direction. It can't be something other than biblical direction. We have to stand fast. One mind. In Philippians, 
Philippians, same book, but chapter 4, verse 3. And I entreat thee also, true yoke fellow, help those women which labor with me in the gospel, with Clement also, and with other fellow laborers whose names are in the book of life. The idea of laboring with me, the idea of striving together, we are to have this single-mindedness, having this one spirit and one mind. It has to be an equal yoke when we work together. We know about the unequal yoke, as Scripture tells us in 2 Corinthians 6 and elsewhere, being unequally yoked together, together with unbelievers. Because there's the, no, there can be no fellowship of light with darkness. But we have to have an equal yoke. And so when we strive together with one mind and one spirit, and we strive together for the faith of the gospel, that, that idea of striving together was, was reflected in the, in, the, in the idea of laboring with me in the, the previous verse, Philippians 4, 3. Striving together, working together, and in nothing, verse 28, and in nothing, terrified. The idea of, of terrified. There, there are many things that could terrify us, that could frighten us. But the Bible says, and in nothing terrified of your adversaries. The idea of, of being terrified, obviously, as it says, to be frightened, to be scared. You know, in, in Deuteronomy, they were they were they were they were told not to be frightened. Deuteronomy chapter twenty, verse three, and shall say unto them, Hear, O Israel, ye approach this day unto battle against your enemies. Let not your hearts faint, fear not, and do not terrible, neither be ye terrified because of them. So the children of Israel in a physical hot battle, they were told not to be terrified. Why? Because God was on their side. And, you know, God is immutable. God does not change. That's what immutable means. He doesn't mutate. He does not change. And so, if, if God was on the side of Israel, won't he be on the side of us today? There's a distinction between the church and Israel. I understand that. But the principle of a trans-dispensational truth a truth that, is, that, is, that applies to every single dispensation of time, every, every single period of time, is that God will take care and will protect us. He will be with us. So we should not be afraid. Although in the flesh we might be afraid. But we have to trust God and not be afraid. And in another, another time, in Luke chapter 21, verse 9, But when ye hear of wars, this is something in the future yet, but it's in, in Luke, prophecy in the book of Luke, be not terrified, for these things must first come to pass, but the end is not by and by. So the idea of, of we are not to be terrified. We're not to be, it says, the scripture says in verse 20, and in nothing terrified by your adversaries. Now, an adversary is somebody who is opposed to us. Somebody who is opposed to the gospel. That's what an adversary is. That's what an adversary would be. Someone that's opposed to the gospel. And we cannot be terrified of them. Because they're on the wrong side. They're, again, they're, they're, they're opposed to what God, the gospel is. They're opposed to what, what God stands for. They're opposed to everything that's biblical. And so the Bible says, we're exhorted here in, in this, this passage, and not even be terrified of your adversaries. Even in the, in the midst of adversaries, in 1 Corinthians chapter 16, verse 9, Paul, Paul says, Paul reminds us, reminds the church of Corinth, he says, For a great door of effectual is opened unto me, and there are many adversaries. But amongst the adversaries, there was a, there was a great door of effectual. Now, in Galatians chapter 5, verse 17, the same word as adversaries in Philippians chapter 1, verse 28, is contrary. 
appears as contrary. Now let me read the verse. Galatians 5, 17. For the flesh lusteth against the spirit, and the spirit against the flesh. And these two are contrary, the one to the other. So they cannot do the things which he would. These are, are contrary. The word contrary, same, the, the Greek word behind this English word contrary, is the same Greek word behind the word adversary in verse 28. So that they cannot do the things that they would. And that the same is true in 2 Thessalonians 2, 4, the idea of oppose. Who opposeth and exalteth himself above all that is called God, or that is worshipped. So that as he sitteth in the temple of God, showing himself that he is God. And the idea of an adversary. And we are not to be terrified. We are not to be terrified of, of our adversaries. Because... There is, there is something far greater. We're to stand fast. The word of God and the words of God, the authority of Scripture, is what guides us, what directs us. The gospel is what convicts the lost. The word of God convicts the sinner to change the way they're living. It convicts the believer to be conformed to the image of God. And we are not to be terrified of the adversaries, which to them, this is the adversaries, the gospel to them, to the adversaries, is an evident token of perdition. It's proof to them. At in verse in Second Corinthians eight twenty four, wherefore show ye them before the churches the proof of your love and your boasting on your behalf, 2 Corinthians 8, 24. The idea of a token, it represents something. Not too long ago, if you're, if you're in relative terms, you, you would buy tokens to cross bridges. They did away with the tokens. They were trying all different ways to make things efficient to get across bridges. But that token was representative of something. And here, a token, something that represents something, which to them, this is, the, this is the, the, the foundation, the very, very principles of the gospel, to them, evident token of perdition. To them, to the adversaries, to those people that are opposed to Christ, it represents perdition, it represents judgment, punishment, destruction. And they don't want that. They don't like that. But that's what it represents. And so, we can have confidence to stand fast, to stand fast in our life, our conversation, to become the gospel, should be becoming the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. Because the adversaries, those that are opposed to us, the gospel to them is judgment, is perdition. But to us, it is salvation, that is deliverance. The idea of the idea of perdition, and we, we think of that, that as destruction. You know, in Philippians chapter three, verse nineteen, the same word perdition in this passage here in Philippians one twenty eight is is we have the word destruction used in Philippians three nineteen, whose end is destruction, whose God is their belly, and whose glory is their shame, who mind earthly things. You know, just think of the false prophets in Second Peter chapter two, verse one. But there were false prophets among the people, even as there shall be false teachers among you, who privately shall bring in damnable heresies, even denying the Lord that bought them, and bringing unto themselves swift destruction. The idea of perdition. It's a token. Those that oppose the gospel. It's a token to them of perdition of judgment. The very fact every time they every time they reject the gospel, it's a token of judgment. It represents judgment to them. But the gospel to us, to those that are redeemed, to those who have been genuinely saved and washed in the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ, and are trusting in Him alone for salvation, in the redemptive work of Calvary, the gospel, but to you of salvation, 
it says here at the end of verse 28, but to you of salvation and that of God. God is the source. Christ did the redemptive work in Calvary. The God, the Godhead had a plan. God had a plan to redeem fallen man. At the, at the moment, man sinned. When we were with Adam, for that by one man's sin, death passed upon all. At that moment, among the Godhead, a plan of redemption was formulated. I mean, I don't want to get into too deep, too deep a detail about the decrees of God, but the idea of redemption, there was a plan of redemption. And that plan of redemption was to have a son, the Son of God, the second person of the Trinity, the Lord Jesus Christ, the eternal Son of God, to become flesh and to die to redeem the fallen race of Adam. You see, that's the gospel. A token of perdition to the lost. A token of perdition to those that oppose and who those who are adversaries of the gospel. But to those of us who are born again Christians, but to you of salvation and that of God. Salvation is deliverance. From what are we delivered? We're delivered from God's wrath, from his punishment that is going to come upon all those who reject the Lord Jesus Christ as the only Savior. There are no other ways to heaven but through Jesus Christ. In John chapter 14, verse 6, Jesus saith unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. Way is singular. There is no other way. Although people today will tell you that, it's contrary to Scripture. They are the adversaries of the gospel. Those people that say, it doesn't matter, everyone's going to get to heaven, this, this, this particular religion is okay, this particular religion is okay. It's not. It's contrary to sound doctrine. It's contrary to what the Word of God says. Whether it's Islam, you know, Buddhism, whatever it might be. If it's not involving the death, the burial, and the resurrection of Jesus Christ, it's a false gospel. And the gospel of Jesus Christ to those organizations, to those people, to those groups, to those religions, is a token of perdition, a token of judgment. Verse 29, For unto you is given in the behalf of Christ. Unto you. It's something that is personal. Unto each of us it's given. In the behalf of Christ. Idea of, of something that's given on the behalf of Christ, for the sake of Christ. Not only to believe on Him, but also to suffer for His sake. So there's things that come with the gospel, with our salvation. We have opportunity of believing on the Lord Jesus Christ, believing on Him. But also, the scripture says, but also to suffer for His sake. To suffer in behalf of Christ. To believe. The idea of thinking of what is true and what is honest was think of all the, all, the, all the fruits of the Spirit to believe we think of, of, of connected that word is very closely connected to faith same very similar stems believe and faith to believe but also not only that but we have but also it says here in the scripture but also to suffer to suffer for his sake not necessarily suffer for own sakes, or suffer for somebody else's sake, but to suffer for His. And the seed of His is the Lord Jesus Christ. To suffer for Christ. To suffer for Christ. To, for Christ. to be, the idea of suffering, to be afflicted. God is affliction. 
in different different degrees. When we think of the idea of, of suffering for Christ, you know, in Acts chapter three, verse eighteen, the Bible says, "But those things which God before hath showed by the mouth of all the prophets that Christ should suffer." He hath so fulfilled. You know, Christ suffered for us. Hebrews 13 tells us he suffered without the gate. And he suffered for us. And in 1 Peter 2, 21, we need to follow in his footsteps. And if that means suffering for him, we must be willing to suffer for him. First Peter 2.21 For even here and too were we call because Christ also suffered for us, leaving an example that we should follow in his steps. So we must remember to stand fast, to do those things that are, that are true and faithful to the word of God. Not things that are contrary to the word of God, but things that are true and faithful to the word of God. And and here in verse 30, Paul says, in having this confidence, we can have confidence, we can have confidence you know, that you saw in me. Now, probably conflict, having this conflict which you saw in me. The conflict that Paul had earlier on in this, the same chapter, earlier going back to verse 19, and I'm sure there's other conflicts that he had, but in verse, in verse 19, probably verse, uh, verse 21, uh, for me to live is Christ and to die is gain. For if I live in the flesh, this is the fruit of my labor. Yet what I shall I choose not choose, I wot not. For I am straight betwixt two, having desire to depart and to be with Christ, which is far better. Nevertheless, to abide in the flesh is more needful for you. The idea about this, this conflict. Church of Philippi, another church of Saul, the conflict Paul was having. He wanted to be a minister and an encourager to the saints of Philippi and to others in different cities, in different churches. But he's, he had a desire to depart and to be with Christ. And the idea of a conflict, he was having this, this conflict. The idea of, of um, this conflict, the word, the, the, the word behind conflict, has the idea of a, um, to assemble for a, um, a sporting activity. You know, back in the days of of the Roman, Roman different types of events they would have, like we have sporting events today. But that, that's the idea of a conflict uh, he, he's trying to get at, as far as when you have a contest between two groups, whether it's name your sport, baseball, football, basketball, hockey, and there's, there's probably more sports, tiddly wings, horses, whatever you want to call it, you know. Uh, na you know name your sport, uh, two, two parties, a conflict, you know, a conflict. And so having this conflict, um, the idea of it's it's a place where they would assemble to watch watch the activity, watch the sporting event. Having this conflict, which you saw on me, the, the idea of a contest. You know, in in, in uh, Colossians two one, the Bible says, "For I would that you knew what great conflict I had for you, and for them at Laodicea." And for as many as have not seen my face in the flesh, you know the, the idea in in First Thessalonians two two, the Bible says, but even after we had suffered before, were shamefully entreated, as now at Philippi, we were bold in our God to speak unto you the gospel of God, with much contention. The idea of much contention, the word the, word, the Greek word behind much contention, the same as the word behind conflict. So the idea of, and then also in, in fighting the good fight of faith, in, in first, first Timothy 6, 1 Timothy 6.1, fight the good fight of faith. I, I, fought a good, I fought a good fight. I finished my course, I've kept the faith. The idea of good fight. The idea of a conflict. But the idea of having the same conflict. Paul was having this conflict. He wanted to depart, but he understood the, the idea of, of, of remaining was necessary. He understood the idea of dying was better for me to live as Christ, but to die is gain. But he knew to remain in his flesh was more needful. 
and the church of Philippi but saw it in him and they heard about it heard it to be in me he says in verse 30 and so the, the, the principle of, of what the church of Philippi was receiving from the apostle Paul in this last section of cha chapter 1 was the, the, the purpose for them to stand fast the purpose behind their standing fast was so that they, their lives, could be a faithful witness of the gospel of Jesus Christ. And God wants our lives to be a faithful witness of the gospel of Jesus Christ. To the lost, to the damned, to the reprobates of this world, the gospel means judgment. But to us, it means the power of God unto salvation. That's what the gospel means for us. And that's why we must stand fast in the gospel and for the gospel. We must stand fast in one spirit, with one mind, striving together for the faith of the gospel. And that must be, that must be our objective, to stand fast. And this is what God wants us to do. He doesn't want us to reject and turn away from the truth of the Word of God. He wants us to stand fast. Father, allow us to stand fast. Allow us to be able to embrace the power of the Gospel. We do ask that those who have rejected the Gospel, that Thou would work in their hearts that would give them a clear understanding of the gospel, of the death, the burial, the resurrection of thy Son, the Lord Jesus Christ. We do ask that it would open their eyes and turn them from darkness to light. Help all those of us that have been redeemed to appreciate the power of the gospel and to stand fast. In Jesus' name, amen. Please uh, take your hymnals and turn to him 730, 730.